Hello people of the internet and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you'll stick around for a while. So if you were on the side of the internet I was a year ago then you have likely seen or heard something about this book. This is I'm Glad My Mom Died, written by Jeanette McCurdy, formerly of iCarly and Sam and Cat fame, now turned fantastic author. Today, we are going to be reviewing I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy a year late. So let's get into it. So I first started hearing about this book about a year ago, whenever Jeanette was doing a kind of circuit of podcasts and interviews promoting the book. I wanted to read it right away because I always really liked Jeanette McCurdy's characters on Nickelodeon, and I didn't know before hearing about this book release what all she had really gone through. But as someone who is perpetually afflicted by the procrastination bug, I obviously waited until Christmas when I received it as a present to pick the book up and read it. And it took me months to finish it because I was reading it like a chapter at a time whenever I had a chance. All in all, it took me a while to read this book, hence why this review is coming out a year late. But now that I have read the book, I am so very glad that I did. This book has a lot of heavy themes in it, specifically themes of abuse, addiction, eating disorders, pretty much all the bad stuff. And I also want to issue a minor spoiler alert. There won't be a ton of spoilers for the book, but if you simply do not want to know anything about the book before you read it, then this video may not be for you because I will be discussing general themes of the book and reading some quotes. So now that the warnings and overview are out of the way, let's get into what I liked about the book. In this book, Jeanette dives deep into about four main topics that I personally noted. She talks about her relationship with her mother, her relationship with acting, her relationship with food, and ultimately her relationship with herself in many ways. The first thing I want to note that I really enjoyed about this book is the writing style. Jeanette presents the story in chronological order, starting from early childhood all the way until pretty much current day. She writes in short, easily digestible chapters, like I'm talking most chapters are only a few pages, and the book itself I believe is only 300 pages long. So it makes for a very quick read if you just have time to sit down and power through the book. And although she never writes like a child per se, she does write from the perspective of herself at any given age. So if she's six years old telling a story, she's writing from the perspective as if she is experiencing that as a six-year-old. I felt her writing was very raw and impactful, as well as dark-humored and sarcastic. She'll take you through the depths of a very intense moment and then break the ice at the end by throwing in some sarcasm. And that's honestly appreciated as a reprieve in this book because there are a lot of heavy moments. It kind of feels like you're reading a diary where someone is just writing a real and raw play-by-play -play of scenarios that have happened in their life. She's definitely not trying to make the audience comfortable at any point. The point of this book, I feel, was to be exactly true to her stories, no matter how difficult that was for other people to hear. In the first half of the book, Jeanette really emphasizes her relationship with her mother and the abuse and manipulation she experienced at her hands. From the beginning, Jeanette describes the conflict within herself of her mother being her closest confidant and essentially her best friend, while also being the person she fears the most because of her volatile nature. She perfectly represents the subtle yet obvious in hindsight ways that her mother was controlling her, down to the very reason Jeanette started acting in the first place. I'm going to read a quote for you guys so I can kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about with her writing style and also how she is describing her relationship with her mother. This is one of the lighter ones though, I didn't want to give anything too crazy away, so just know that she goes a lot deeper than what quotes I'm going to give you here. So in this chapter, Jeanette is talking with her mother as her mom is doing her hair. During the course of it, her mother laments about everything she wanted to be but couldn't because other people held her down, stating, I was destined for a good life, for fame and fortune. You know how much I wanted to be an actress. But grandma and grandpa wouldn't let you, I say. But grandma and grandpa wouldn't let me. That's right. Then after some brief discussion and basically Jeanette's mother talking crap about her own parents, she drops a bomb on Jeanette. Mom pauses the way she does before she's about to say something she thinks is part of a big moment. She bends around to look at me in the eye, still holding my unfinished hair strand. So what do you say? You wanna act? You wanna be mommy's little actress? 
there's only one right answer. I really enjoy this quote as an example of how Jeanette's mother manipulated her so heavily. She fed Jeanette these stories about her grandparents, about how they held her mother down, and how so many scenarios in her mother's life kept her from being great, kept her from being an actress, kept her from living the life that she wanted of riches and fame. She puts all of this emotional baggage onto her young daughter, and then by doing that, essentially pressures Jeanette into agreeing to do acting so that her mother could have a second chance at living the life that she never got to live. Because that is a wonderfully adjusted way to behave as a parent. Another thing I really enjoyed about this book was kind of the -the behind-the-scenes insight as to what it's like to be an actor. But not just an actor, specifically a child actor on a major TV network. We get to follow Jeanette's career literally from beginning to end. She talks about different things in her childhood that she had to go through leading up to the point where she got casted on Nickelodeon for Carly. And honestly, it was fascinating to me. It was very interesting hearing the technical aspects of what goes into auditions, what goes into getting an agent, and just kind of the emotional wear and tear that running scenes over and over and over again can have, especially on a child. There was a time in the book where Jeanette describes having to act really upset in a scene over and over and over again and how mentally exhausting that was for her. You are having to muster real feelings and emotions to get that response out of yourself. It may be fake, it may be something you're doing for a scene, but to push yourself to cry and scream and react that way on demand, I can imagine that that is just a mindfuck and very exhausting, especially for a kid. And then after running those scenes over and over again, potentially still having some weird guy producer telling you that, oh no, you need to do it again because you didn't look sad enough or you didn't look upset enough. You didn't look like you were in pain enough. Like, I couldn't do it, so I don't see how half these kids do. But actually, a lot are forced to by their parents. But yeah, hearing the whole behind the scenes was very interesting. But what I felt was more interesting is the impact that it had on Jeanette. How she really fell into the pipeline of becoming a child actor and then it essentially destroying her life. I already had an issue with the concept of child actors anyway because I think putting kids in entertainment in general is usually mainly for the parents' benefit. They get secondhand notoriety because their kid has been in something and then they also get the money that their child can't access because they're not an adult. So yeah, she goes through her acting experience as a child all the way through teen into adulthood and she highlights at many points the gross and hostile behavior that she experienced from the creator on Nickelodeon. And although she never names who specifically the creator is, most everyone assumes that it is allegedly Dan Schneider, the foot-loving inappropriate producer of many of your favorite Nickelodeon shows. Jeanette went through hell through the duration of her acting career, but especially during her time at Nickelodeon. Just like her mother, the creator manipulated and abused her vulnerability. He made her feel special and held roles over her head to make her do what he said. And ultimately, he was just entirely inappropriate towards Jeanette, and she was a minor. I'm not going to detail too deeply into this one and give quotes because I feel like it is best told by Jeanette herself, by reading the book and hearing how she lays out the whole experience. But in overview, she had a very negative experience and was manipulated into acting by her mother and then further manipulated into acting by everyone else in her life. Because at that point, she had fame and money, which was something very valuable to her mother, and that was a big driving force in making her continue to act. When she stated in many ways that she did not want to continue acting. One more thing that I want to give Jeanette her flowers on is her depiction of trauma, of mental illness, and of eating disorders. She really does it in a way that feels straightforward yet vulnerable. And honestly, her depictions of her experiencing early signs of OCD whenever she was a child are some of my favorite examples of how she just kind of perfectly lays out how quickly things can sneak up on you. I'm going to read you guys a quote from this chapter where Jeanette is waiting to go into an audition. When she gets spoken to by the Holy Ghost, which we later find out is just the voice of her OCD. But she believes it's God directly talking to her and giving her instructions. Wow, I love how direct he is. I jump out of my seat to accomplish a list of tasks he ordered me to do. He being the Holy Ghost. Where are you going? Mom asks me. 
I have to pee, I tell her as I cross my name out of the sign-in sheet. She follows me into the bathroom and then into the stall. I touch my underwear band five times. What are you doing, Net? Mom asks, looking concerned. The Holy Ghost talked to me, I tell her excitedly, sure that this will assuage her worries. I twirl on my left foot. Uh Uh-huh, Mom says. He talked to me, I tell her again. She must have not heard me, or she'd be just as excited as I am. I unlock and relock the bathroom door five times while she watches. Why are you looking at me like that? I ask her. She pauses and looks a little sad. Nothing. We head back into the waiting room, and I re-sign in. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. And honestly, I love that passage of the book specifically because it just shows how naive she was and how she thought that all of this that was happening to her was for some divine plan. We find out earlier in the book that Jeanette was raised Mormon, so it makes sense that her OCD presents itself as the Holy Ghost, this voice that's guiding her to do the things that she needs to do so that she can be successful, whether that be touching her waistband five times, twirling on her left foot, or locking and relocking the door. She describes it in such a juvenile way that you immediately feel a sense of sadness for her because you can tell that this is the early stages of something that's going to be a big struggle. And throughout the book, she has these amazing depictions of some of the hardest moments in her life, whether that be abuse from her mother or other people, whether that be her very uncomfortable experiences with men, whether that be very graphic and detailed scenes talking about her eating disorder. She does an amazing job of keeping it raw, keeping it real, and explaining it in a way that feels truthful to her at the time that she was experiencing it. But through all of these depictions of trauma and abuse and eating disorders, nothing ever felt gratuitous for the sake of it. Yes, these depictions of what she went through are incredibly painful, especially if you're someone who has experienced anything similar. But I don't think she's being painful for the sake of causing people pain. I think she's just being very true to her experiences and how they actually happened. And that's not always going to be comfortable for the reader. And for the entirety of the book, if she had not included those things, then we wouldn't have very important context about her life story that led her to where she is today. So what did I dislike about the book? I feel like my main critique would be the pacing of the very end of the book. Like the final few chapters felt to me like they were maybe a bit rushed because she was leading up to the ending of the book, trying to conclude everything, but also trying to catch us up to more present times. I feel like she wrapped everything up really well in the final chapter. I just think the ones leading up to the final chapter maybe felt a little rushed. But to be fair, the rest of the book also had short, concise chapters, so why then would she have some big, drawn-out, dramatic ending? She wouldn't. Like, that wouldn't make sense for the book. So I get why the chapters are structured that way in the end, but I can't help but feeling that it was a little bit choppy. Ultimately, I ended up enjoying the book and the conclusion of the book, so really, I don't think that's a genuine critique. So those are my thoughts on I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I highly recommend you check out this book if you were ever interested in reading it and just haven't yet, or if you're just hearing about it now in this video. Again, the subject matter is a little difficult, but the read itself, the entire book, is a very fast read, very easy to get behind, and I highly recommend it. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever read this book or if you plan to read it now that you've seen this video. And if you enjoyed the video and want to see more videos from me, then please subscribe to the channel. Anyway, that is it for me today, guys. I love you, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Much love.